with it said that Stephanie McMahon may never return to WWE and more. This is Wrestling Hub. My name is John, and you're watching the Wrestling Report for June 10. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official, and also follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. Explaining the origin of her doll Lily, which she has kept despite shedding her dark side from her time with The Fiend, Alexa Bliss told WWE Deutsch when how Lily came to be. I had texted Jason that I was saying I really want a doll to interact with, and he was like, a doll? I said, yeah, I want a doll. And I was like, I want it to look like someone scribbled her, like a child scribbled her on a piece of paper. She just popped off the page. I was like, button eyes, 3D teeth, wanted to kind of look like me, but scary. And they came up with, they showed me Lily, and it was the most incredible thing I've ever seen. John Moxley will compete for the interim AEW World title at Forbidden Door. With Brian Danielson and Adam Cole injured, Dave Meltzer reported why Chris Jericho was not booked in the match. But the participants in the Battle Royal were weak and made the interim title idea be less than it should have. The idea should be that only the top wrestlers on the roster should be in the Battle Royal. But we didn't have Adam Page, the former champion, who addressed it but no logical reason was given. Malachi Black, who almost never loses. Chris Jericho, who had this week off as he had booked a family vacation for this week more than three months back, but from a logical standpoint, nobody would know or understand why he wasn't in the Battle Royal. Samoa Joe, Scorpio Sky, Miro, Jungle Boy, Jeff Hardy, who has been pushed as both a single and a tag team guy, Pac, Penta, Wardlow, and Brody King all should have been involved. The IWGP title is expected to be defended by Okada or Jay White at the Forbidden Door event against Adam Cole and Hangman Page in a triple threat bout. After his incredible performance at Hell in a Cell, The Observer would also point out that Cody Rhodes made history. The show had the usual 200,000 Google searches that most WWE pay-per-view shows get, similar to that of Double or Nothing the week before. There were another 200,000 searches that day for Rhodes, the most of any individual wrestler in a pro wrestling pay-per-view show in years. Coming out of the pay-per-view on Monday Night Raw this week, Seth Rollins would say to Cody that he had earned his respect, but after shaking his hand and walking away, he still ended up attacking him from behind. Calling out this creative move by WWE, Jim Cornette said on his Drive Through podcast, then what about if next week after they announce that Seth or that Cody is having surgery and is injured, to Seth, who has just said these things and hugged him and shook his hand and kissed him and respects him, came out and said, well, I'll tell you what, I've been the champion before, and I'm gonna do it again. This has lit a fire under me because Cody Rhodes may not be able to take advantage of his destiny, but I could take advantage of mine and do some kind of angle. The team is in need. Roman can come back for a TV. All Roman needs to do is come out and basically say, F you, I'm in God mode over you too, and drop Seth and him and his cohorts. And then Seth is a full fledged babyface and can wrestle any of the heels that Cody was going to wrestle in his absence, and potentially have a match with Roman Reigns, which he is probably not going to win, but at least it'd be something. Cody Rhodes is expected to return to full strength in four to six months, according to Go Midwest Sports, noting that bench pressing is usually discouraged for six to nine months. Despite recently making the move from the main roster to NXT, Apollo Crews and Aziz are earning the same amount of money according to Dave Meltzer. Crews and Aziz have both been moved from Raw to NXT. The good thing is for now they still have their Raw contract. In the long run, this is probably not a good thing historically. Aziz is huge and an incredible athlete for his size, but his entire gimmick was killed on Raw with the promotion of Amos. Because you can't be a giant when they are heavily pushing another guy who is 5 or 6 
inches taller. Cruz is talented, but the Nigerian gimmick came off so fake, and before the gimmick, they just didn't see anything in him. Obviously, he was a great talent between the ropes, but his height worked against him, and then once they established his level, even with the gimmick change, it was hard to get people's perception of him to be as a guy of high level. As Finn Balor joined the Judgment Day and usurped Edge as leader, Damian Priest revealed on the Believe Pro Wrestling podcast the phone call that led to him joining the group. My phone says his name, and I'm like, oh man, he's just like, hey, so I got this idea. I'm like, what do you think? And then I'm like, what? Why are you asking me? Tell me what to do. It's the coolest thing to see it was Edge calling me to ask me if I'm interested. He didn't even have to ask, but he did because he's cool. The fact that he thought of me is wild to me. He's like, naturally, I thought of you. And I'm like, naturally? I don't even know why I'm so lucky but cool it's edge so it was a great feeling and moment to receive that call edge told me and asked me about the judgment day idea and this was before we even had a name it was just the idea of forming a group that day because he said you naturally you and rhea ripley we were the first on his list hands down he wanted us to be with him which i thought was super cool he saw two people that had a certain style that he digs similar to edge it's that rock star-ish goth darker vibe and bigger people we just have a lot of similarities that that he felt like he could mold us into becoming bigger stars than we were and again for me obviously with our friendship i was super excited that to know that was the idea now was it going to be 100 percent a thing that we didn't know until the day you never know things could always change including me being by his side of wrestlemania that was what we hoped for but you never know creative could change a lot of things could change in between especially when there's a lot of time i probably was just as excited as Rhea was for her to be a part of this just because I was so happy for her, you know? It was known for a while, at least on Edge and I's viewpoint. We, since the beginning, we knew, or at least we wanted her to be a part of us. Taking to his Something to Wrestle podcast, WWE executive Bruce Pritchard revealed that he will be needing surgery. I have a torn rotator cuff. The plan is to get it fixed next Wednesday. Six months rehab. I had colitis. I changed my diet. I started working out. I started getting healthy and started feeling good. Actually, man, I put on weight because I've been working out and I'm getting stronger and all this good stuff. Feeling really good, but my shoulder was bugging me, so I was going in for treatments for my shoulder. In the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, it was revealed that an autobiography on the WWE chairman is in the works, with it said that representatives of Vince McMahon are shopping to the major book companies the idea of an autobiography of Vince to talk about how he built WWE. The New York Post reported on it this week, saying that everyone has been mum and trying to keep it a secret. This would attempt to go head-to-head -head with the Abraham Reisman, who wrote a bio on Stan Lee book, Ringmaster, that Simon & Schuster is putting out early next year. That's the book project they first First asked me about. That book that Reisman has been working on since 2020 didn't include any help from WWE or McMahon, but just about everyone else talked with him about it. With John Cena making his return to Raw later this month, Dave Meltzer gave fans an update on a potential match for the star. Cena returns on the June 27th Raw show in Laredo, Texas. While this has not been confirmed to us by the company, the talk in wrestling is that it will be Cena versus Theory at SummerSlam, with the idea that working with Cena will bring Theory up to a higher level. Speaking of Cena, he would reveal in a video posted by WWE what Vince McMahon's first words to him were before his debut match on SmackDown. I found out at 2.45 in the afternoon that I'd be wrestling Kurt Angle. I had one meeting with Mr. McMahon before this, and I was pushed into his office, and Michael Hayes asked like, what do we do with this? And Mr. McMahon's first sentence to me, it was a short meeting. He said cut his f***ing hair, and then I was out of his office. Also on his podcast, Jim Cornette would give major praise to the WWE United States Champion as he said, Theory is the most natural worker of all the younger guys, even Braun Breaker. Braun Breaker has the edge in his look and his weird Steiner charisma. He's going to be a main event star, but Austin Theory will be the in-ring worker of the next generation.
Taking to Twitter, former WWE star Lana let fans know that she is feeling ill as she wrote, COVID is kicking my ass. Luckily, my doctor is keeping a close eye on me. Might be lack of sleep, but I thought doctor was going to get over more than it did. Either time for more NyQuil or less NyQuil, not sure. Of course, we wish Lana all the best in her recovery and hope she feels better soon. Following the departure of CBO Stephanie McMahon from WWE and the company being accused of planting negative stories about her, it was said by Meltzer that her chances of returning are slim. WWE has officially started the public burial of Stephanie McMahon on the way out. The company did outright tell a reporter with our website negative things and basically knocked her job performance a few weeks after she took the leave of absence, and they were clearly attempting to get that story out. It ended up with a story in Business Insider, where they said that her leaving was a part of a corporate role and a business shakeup decided by Vince McMahon, essentially trying to get out that her father fired her and she didn't leave on her own. That isn't the case and even contradicts their own story, as she was the one who wanted out. From the burial this week, I'd say the odds of her returning have greatly diminished, but time does heal wounds. And she has been with the company for decades and until a few weeks ago was the public face of the company. After multiple teases of a return to programming, Paige announced that she's leaving WWE. She said July 7th will be the last day. I'm so thankful and I appreciate the opportunities that the company has given me. I will always be appreciative of the company that took in an 18-year-old British pale emo girl that didn't look like your average diva, giving me the chance of a lifetime and making me feel like a superstar. I know after my neck injury taking me out of in-ring status, it was pretty hard to keep me around for as long as you did, and for that I'm thankful too. Thank you to the WWE Universe. You guys are the most passionate group of fans. I've ever seen. Hope you continue to stay on this journey with me. I think the toughest part, weirdly enough, is having to let the page name go, but Soraya has a hell of a name. Kudos to my mom for that one. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later.